Hi, so Stanley here and today I'm gonna show you how to measure the capacity of a battery. This is at XHM240 battery tester for lithium battery or different types of battery. You will have two separate power source. You can either use 18650 or this right here. This is from DC 5 volt to 12 volt, but I'm not sure whether whether you can find this type of connector. I don't have the connector at home, so I have some spare 18650 left around. So I'm gonna use this 18650 and connect it to the positive, which is this side right here, and the negative pin is right here. You can see that it lights up and it shows zero volts because you never put the battery. You can, for example, put the battery and that's it. So now I put the battery and the voltage is around 3.8 volts. This is a 10 watt 8 ohm J resistor. Watts equals to voltage times current in amperes. Voltage is in volts. 10 watts 8 ohms. The capacity will count. This is a milliamp hour. You press this one right here which is the 电池电压 milliamp hour slash milliwatt hour so you can toggle between milliamp hour milliwatt hour and the voltage of the battery the first button is to start it says chang an ting ling which is to clear everything when you press when you hold on to the button so to reset it you have to hold the button for a longer time you can see that all the meter change to zero and it will restart again so the resistor will, is getting hot because it has to dissipate the power around 2 watts I think. So uh, power equals to voltage times current. Voltage is 4 volts and the current is 500 milliamp. So the power is 2 watts. The resistor is getting hot but it's isolated from the battery so the resistor heat wouldn't transfer to the battery that easily. The third and fourth button is to change the cutoff voltage. Normally it's set to 3 volts. See that? 3 volts. You can change it from 1 volt. You hold the button to decrease the voltage in steps and then you press the button if you want to decrease it slowly. See? Minimum is 1 volt. I can't get any lower. You can use it to measure the this one right here which is a nickel metal hydride battery oh so the maximum is 9 volts so let's set the color voltage to 3 volts and this guy right here this guy has a capacity of 11,560 milliampere hour divided by 3 but you might ask hey the capacity is 11,560 why do I have to divide by 3 well this is because there are 3 batteries in parallel and total combined, it gives around 3850 milliamp hour per cell. So the capacity in watt hour is the nominal voltage of the battery times the, the capacity in amp hour. If you want to find watt hour, if you want to find milliwatt hour, you just leave it as milliamp hour. So you can see that the capacity is 42.772 watt hour, but they like to round it up to 43 watt hour. This battery is made of diff a lot of polymer cells a lot and a lot that's why it says polymer no, it's like less than half a centimeter so if you go and puncture it you can cause a short circuit and you can cause the battery to go spin so don't try at home huh? don't try this at home so let me show you the voltage of it the voltage is zero volts of course because i never connect anything yet so let's connect the battery yellow is positive of the battery and blue is the negative of the battery. Reverse polarity. You cannot reverse polarity for this one. It has only a small chip bypass with the battery. So it's extremely dangerous if you go and reverse polarity this thing. So to keep this thing in place, I'll be using a neodymium magnet right here. You can see that the voltage rises to around 4.1 volts, very close to 4.2 volts. That's the maximum charge voltage of the lithium ion cell. So let's discharge it using this dummy load by pressing this button right here. 
Let's reset the entire thing first. Let's start it. Alright, so around 1240 milliampere hour has been taken from the battery and the voltage of the original battery itself is around 3.67 volts. See that? Tomorrow. So it's now morning and the battery is empty. You can see that the light is flashing, which means that the battery is flat. The total capacity is 4357 milliampere hour. So this Apple battery right here is the second of the iPad third generation battery. There are three batteries packed in parallel in the iPad third generation and each battery has a nominal capacity of around 3850 milliampere hour. So this one is the battery that I'm going to test it. But beforehand, let's measure the voltage of the battery to confirm. We must keep the battery at 3.7 to 3.8 volt to prolong the lifespan of the battery. When you are storing the battery, the voltage of the battery should be around this voltage, around 3.7 to 3.8 volts, somewhere in between there. So you can see that the voltage is 3.73 volts. And at the back, we can see some specification of the battery. Says it's a 14.8. What our 3.7 volt lithium ion polymer battery. This is a very very thin battery. Its weight is only 68 grams. So the capacity in watt hour is 14.8 watt hour. And to find ampere hour, you just divide it the nominal voltage as shown at back. So you can see that the capacity is 4 m hour or 4000 milliampere hour if you multiply that by 1000. Alright, so let's charge it using my vet cell intelligent charger. So this is the vet cell charger, let's connect it up. The negative and the positive like this somehow. See, saying lithium ion, 3.7 volts. We are gonna change that to 3.8 volts and we are gonna charge it up. This is because I want the battery to be fully charged when discharging. See, change that to lithium ion 3.8 volts and the current to 2 amps. That's the nominal charge current of the iPad battery. You can see it's around charging there. And I don't know whether it's inaccurate or not, this battery meter. But we are gonna leave it and charging. You can see and just jump to the maximum there. <laughs> Alright, so we are gonna left this for at least few hours to charge it up and we'll see what happens. Probably around 1 to 2 hours we can test it out. Right, so let's see you there. Alright, so you can see that the battery is now fully charged and the voltage is 4.1 volts to 4.2 volts. And let's use a new linear magnet. This lithium ion holder cannot fit lithium polymer. Because you can see that the size of lithium polymer is way larger than lithium ion. This is for you to compare. See that? Alright, yeah, so once done, you can see it looks something like this. I don't have to fit it properly first. Um, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. This is 4 volts. Let's press the button. The voltage quickly drops due to line resistance. Let's measure the voltage of the battery. The negative and this side is the positive. It's around 3.88 volts, 3.89 volts. So you can see that the voltage drops due to line resistance. So let's discharge it until the battery is flat at 3 volts. The nominal discharge voltage is 3 volts. 3 volts is set to 3 volts. So it will cut off at 3 volts to prevent over discharge of the battery. A few inches later, around 635 milliampere hour has been taken from the battery and the voltage is around 3.7 volts. So you can see that the voltage is quite nice and the battery has quite a good impression so far. The voltage only dropped very little. Let me show you the actual voltage. 3.72, 3.71. Later. So I accidentally disconnect the battery and the capacity is 1662 milliampere hour at a voltage of 3.8 volts. So let's record this thing down. 1662 milliampere hour. Let's reset the entire thing and let's try again. You can see the voltage drops to 3.6 volts and the battery is discharging. So, sorry about that, the capacity is 1,662 milliampere hours. We'll be continuing discharging it and we'll add up. Day three. 
and the total capacity was around 2135 mAh. We will be adding this from the 1662 mAh and see what the answer do we get. So the capacity, the second run is 2135 mAh. So total will give you uh, 3797 million hour as your total capacity. This is quite high, but although it's not very close to the 14.8 watt hour, it's not half bad either. So, Apple batteries are quite good. But take note for those with different capacities, the battery should not be put in parallel or not. The other battery could charge the other battery and could result in uneven discharging and charging and could cause one maybe this or that battery to die so the other one we got 4357 mAh this one we got 3797 mAh let's write the value down 3797 mAh and we're gonna cut this thing into a rectangle and we're gonna tape it on the battery this so we can just basically take this thing out from the battery prison and just basically disconnect this battery this battery has been sitting there for like a couple of like at least one day now and i forgot to measure the voltage of the battery probably should be around 3.7 volts i think the nominal drain current of this battery tester is around let's just say around not much, 10 milliamps I think, but 10 milliamps can drain the battery in a couple of days, isn't it? So, let's measure the voltage of the finale battery that has been connected to the tester. So the 3797 milliampere hour locks around 3.33 volts. And the battery which has been helped the testing, the battery locks a voltage of around Wow, it's 3.9 volts on the multimeter. So the battery didn't drain much, eh? Look at that. And the second battery that I've tested two days, three days ago, locks around 3.75 volts in the storage condition. So we are going to keep the two batteries here and we are going to end the session here. So Apple batteries are generally very legitimate it's quite safe if you don't try to puncture them of course because anything doesn't like to get punctured right do you like to get punctured no right so don't don't puncture a battery and with that being said thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video